Hello and welcome foolish mortals. It's pretty obvious by now that this is my favorite time of year and I love seeing all of the Halloween content, both old and new, that's coming out, especially from Disney. And as I was scrolling through Disney Plus the other day, I ended up finding a gem of a treasure that I had no idea about with Mickey's spooky stories. For some reason, this went completely under my radar, but also it is made for the younger crowd. So little to my knowledge, they did more advertising on their cable channels and I had no idea, but I was very happy to find this. And it's a series of five different shorts. They're all about one to two minutes long and each of the fab five characters get their own story to tell. Goofy's is called A Goofy Ghost Story. Daisy's is called Scary Fairy Tale. Donald's is called Tales of Spooky Spells. Minnie has Minnie's Creepy Crawly Tale. And Mickey's is a Mickey Monster Tale. So you can see that they have a lot of that kind of cutesy, ooky, spooky rhyming to it, which is adorable. Surprisingly, it's in a nice stop motion style animation, which we love. Give me more of this animation, please. Not that Ren and Stimpy knockoff crap. This is wonderful. Although it does have a slight robot chicken vibe with the stop motion quality, but still, they look amazing. It's such an improvement. Some of the ghosts from the Haunted Mansion show Goofy how to be a good ghost and he scares all of his friends. But how did Goofy become a ghost in the first place? Did he die from all of the extreme sports that he did in the past? Again, I know I'm going far too deep into this lore that it doesn't matter because these shorts are made for preschoolers. Well, actually it's meant for an older crowd since these are all rated TVY7. Daisy's is just one of her romantic fantasies as a story, but I am so pleased by the references in this. Donald goes trick-or-treating and ends up at a witch's house, the same witch that was in the classic trick-or-treat short that I previously talked about from the 50s. And that's not the only reference. The candy apples look just like the ones in Snow White. There's the most adorable bat that I want as a plush named Kevin. That's not a reference. I just love bats so much, so I wanted to point that out. The witch invites Donald in in order to trick him and take his candy by putting him under a sleeping spell that only a princess can break by giving him a kiss. Interesting role reversal in the story, by the way. Daisy shows up afterwards, and not only is she a princess, but also does magic too. Why is it heroic for Daisy to use magic, but the witch is shown as a bad guy? That's a deeper rabbit hole of a discussion that I'm not going to get into here, but we need to stop the negative witch slander. And because this is remnant of the trick or treat short that I previously talked about, the witch is completely in a right to get revenge on Donald. That's all I'm saying. The witch has all the right to get revenge on Donald. Donald deserves it. Donald needs to stop being selfish and obsessed with wine candy. Anyways, Daisy gives him a kiss. He wakes up, they move on. That's the end. In Donald's tale, he's trick or treating with Mickey through a graveyard when the same witch ends up dropping her spell book by them as she's flying by. The spell book looks just like the one from Hocus Pocus. It's not officially canon, but I like to think that it is, so we're going with it. They try to use the book to get more candy, but it keeps going wrong and they instead cause chaos by making different monsters appear. I do wonder if the skeletons are a Cavadier Dan reference, but I do feel like that would be too niche. In the end, the third spell that they do does work and all the creatures go back to where they came and it's a cute, happy ending for all. Donald, you do not need all that candy. This is the reason we're in these troubles in the first place. Minnie's story is all about how she loves Halloween, but she's a spider, so everyone is afraid of her. Also, if someone is dressed as Locke from Nightmare Before Christmas in the background. Whoever created these, you made me so happy watching them. Pete is a werewolf in this tale, and he tries to get the gang to give him all their candy, but Spider Minnie pops down to help stop Pete, and they realize she's not scary after all. They work together to stop Pete, and she's now a part of their group. Mickey has the last tale, and he's on the hunt to figure out what his costume will be. Also, more Easter eggs to point out right away. Emily Binks from Hocus Pocus has a gravestone within the first few seconds. This is real Hocus Pocus canon. I don't have to pretend. Anyways, so Mickey on his search says it's getting too spooky. As the night grew dark, the streets became very spooky. It's getting too spooky out here. So he runs towards the Halloween hotel where he's greeted by Ghost Goofy. 
Welcome to the Halloween Hotel. And he's completely unfazed. Oh, boy, am I glad to be inside. Mickey gets his costume and makes a monster friend along the way, and they all go trick-or-treating together. Mickey, your story is lame. It's the worst one of them all. Overall, though, these were such adorable, super cute shorts, and I loved how much effort went into these. What I didn't realize is there was another short that premiered last year called Mickey and Friends Sugar Treats, and this was a continuation from that one. Of course, this is a full-length episodic story, and it's very cute, although I don't really like all the personalities in this. Donald is the whole reason that they get in trouble because he's too obsessed with candy. But I'm not going to spoil this one. And in fact, this covers a lot of the questions that I had about the five stories I just talked about. Y'all, the Easter egg alone within the first minute. The kid that dressed up as Lock is here. Goofy is dressed up as the alligator that's underneath Sally Slater. The type rope walker holding the umbrella that she has. Huey, Dewey, and Louie are dressed up like they were in the previously mentioned trick-or-treat short. The hitchhiking ghosts are shown silhouette style in the windows. The skeletons from the skeleton dance. Another classic short I've covered are long decorations. This is what we want! It's also a bit of a musical with three songs featured. But the songs have that wonderful rockabilly vibe that's a nice throwback to the music that was a part of the House of Mouse series in the early 2000s. Surprisingly though, it's not Brian Seltzer's band, but instead Bo Black. I highly, highly recommend that you give this a watch because I was so impressed by these. What I will say though is that Donald totally deserved getting put under that sleeping spell in Daisy's story. This added more to it and the witch deserves her revenge. And like I said in the beginning of the video, and after doing a little bit of research, this did premiere on television, both on Disney Channel and Disney XD at the same time, and then on Disney Plus the day after. I know I'm one of the many people who don't watch cable anymore, and I also know that I would be too old to be actively watching Disney Channel in its current state. I am really happy that I found this for Disney Plus this year, and I hope that there's more shorts to look forward to within the next coming years. All the shorts are also available to watch on YouTube on their Disney Junior channel, so I'll leave a direct link below. But thank you, Disney. Please keep this great Halloween content coming. And as for me, we still have some more spooky Halloween content to continue as well. But until then, as always, I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.